Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of his, all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, 
God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin shall see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. God. Our service continues with the psalm found on page five of your bulletin, and we will say it antiphonally, starting with the gospel side. Oh, oh how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I, my, I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. continue with the gospel hymn, God of Mercy, God of Grace, found on page seven of your bulletin.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Lord to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Every time my husband and I go to Costco, we look around and see if they have one of those survival buckets. Have you seen those? It's like two weeks of food in case the mountain blows or the earthquake happens or so forth. And um, we started collecting them when an article came out about the earthquake that is supposed to destroy everything someday here. And every once in a while I will look at our collection of survival food and think about how we have enough for four people, there's four of us in our family, to live for four weeks. But we don't have enough for our neighbors if they didn't go to Costco (laughs) and buy the survival bucket. With the smoke outside and all, all of the disasters that are happening, all of us have at least once thought, am I going to have enough food or gas or shelter if something bad happens? And this is a question that I feel we're fundamentally struggling to answer on a number of levels in our culture right now. Who do we have to provide for? Who belongs to us? Because if we know who belongs to us, then we'll know how much we need of whatever that resource is. Food, love, attention, right? And then we can fight for that resource and preserve it for us, whoever us turns out to be. This is also a fundamental question that our scriptures this morning are asking and trying to answer. Is there enough God? Is there enough of God's kingdom and God's love and God's provision for everyone to get what they need? And if not, because I don't know about you, but my experience of life in this world is that no resource is infinite. If there is not enough of God's love and favor, 
then who gets it? Who is it for? Who belongs to God's kingdom? And what, what if the answer is yes, that there is enough? How do we act like that's true when everything that has taught us to be human has taught us that there will never be enough? Paul, in our Romans reading this morning, is answering, yes, there is enough God for everyone. He's reminding his readers that just because God loves and cares for Gentiles, this was a big argument they were having at the time, that doesn't mean that God has forgotten God's love for the Jews. How human is this assumption that if God's favor is on one group, it must have left another group? We assume that we are in competition with each other. And Paul is reminding the church in Rome, we are not. God, unlike human beings, has the capacity to deeply love more than one group of people. Yes, Paul is saying, there's enough prosperity and mercy and love for God to love Gentiles without God's irrevocable choosing of Israel to go away. And then Jesus answers the question, yes, again in our gospel lesson. First, by blowing up the rules around belonging to God associated with Jewish rites and rituals around purity. He says that it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles, but what comes out. Now, you guys, this is a very offensive thing to say to a group of Jewish people, a people who have long and rightly considered themselves the chosen people of God, and who maintain that status by behaving according to particular purity laws. Behaving like a Jewish person is how you belonged to the Jewish religion and how others knew that you belonged. So it is shocking for the disciples. Did you notice they cannot wrap their heads around what he's saying? They ask him to explain it two times. To hear Jesus imply that right relationship with God was not only about following the laws. And then, as if to demonstrate exactly that, Jesus heads off into the land of the Gentiles. Tyre and Sidon are not Jewish districts. And while Jesus is there, this Canaanite woman shows up with a problem. And so, while I imagine that you and I are not deeply shocked around being told that we, what we eat cannot make us unpure in the eyes of God, although my mother might be upset about the part about not washing your hands, right? So just for the record, please wash your hands before you eat. I'm willing to bet that most of us are pretty uncomfortable with the second part of our gospel lesson. The part where a desperate mother throws herself in front of Jesus and he appears to tell her she does not belong, that God's love and mercy is not for her. I mean, wasn't Jesus the one who was just saying we should watch what comes out of our mouths? The irony here is that in this second vignette, the one where we as modern readers and listeners are likely to focus on Jesus' offensive behavior, and it's offensive behavior. In the world inside the story, the person who is acting offensively is not Jesus. It's the woman. She is breaking all the rules by approaching a group of men by herself initiating conversation with them, shouting and behaving in an intrusive manner, and then refusing to leave them alone. This was simply not how women behaved. And we can see how startling it is because once again, the disciples cannot deal. They're so taken aback that they level it up to Jesus and ask him to please make her go away. He won't. Instead, Jesus sets the table for a feast of faith, and the guest of honor at that feast is a woman who, by all the markers of the world the disciples and Jesus are living in, does not belong there. We should know, by the way, that she is going to be really important. We should know it from the moment she shows up, because the text gives her the label Canaanite. 
the writer of the Gospel of Matthew knew that there was not a people group in Jesus' time called Canaanite. This is a label from the Hebrew Scriptures, from our Old Testament. The Canaanites are the ancient foes of Israel who competed with them for the Promised Land and constantly tempted them to worship idols instead of God. And this desperate mother isn't just any Canaanite. She is a woman behaving scandalously and demonstrating a deeper knowledge of the identity and power of God than any of the decent and upright Jewish men who surround her. This places her firmly in the tradition of other Canaanite women. Women like Rahab, the prostitute in Jericho who saved the Israelite scouts and was in turn saved. Women like Tamar, who engaged in some very audacious behavior that is difficult to discuss in mixed company in order to call her Jewish father-in-law to task and demand her due. And women like Ruth, who is not from Canaan but Moab, right next door, who chose the love of her friend Naomi over loyalty to her native people. All of these Gentile women share one thing in common. They are all included in the genealogy of Jesus in the beginning of this gospel of Matthew. They are foreign women whose scandalous and boundary-crossing behavior demonstrated great faith and knowledge of God's mercy and God's love. So as offensive as Jesus appears to us here, we know he is familiar with strong-willed and scandalous women. They are part of his ancestry, and oh, by the way, he was also raised by one of them, a teenager who had the audacity to get pregnant before she was officially married and then refused to feel bad about it. Mary is no slouch when it comes to throwing off custom in order to say yes to God's grace and bounty. So whatever Jesus is up to, what he does here is set the table for great faith. He responds in the way that his disciples and his culture would expect him to respond to this woman. And by doing so, he makes room for her to become an icon of God's kingdom, an example of the deep and sometimes disturbing abundance that sits at God's table. What this desperate mother does for the disciples and for us is name a truth that is both so radical and so obvious that most of us miss it in our daily lives. Here it is. God's table is so abundant. God's love is so deep. And God's kingdom is so inclusive that there is no one who cannot be provided for. There is no one who does not belong. Jesus tells the woman that she cannot sit at the table, a reasonable response for him to make within the confines of his context. And the woman responds by telling Jesus who God is. She reminds him that the feast of love and care and provision in God's kingdom is so great that entire nations can be provided for just from the scraps. She paints this picture of an abundance that is almost as scandalous as the way she has behaved. An abundance that spills over the table and feeds all living things underneath. The Canaanite woman knows something about God that the men around her don't. She knows that God's love is big enough for everyone, and there is no person anywhere that does not belong at God's table. And she doesn't just know it, she lives it. She is the answer to that question of how do we act as if this is true. We act scandalously. (laughs) We behave shamelessly. Her incredible faith is manifest in how she acts from this knowledge. The woman behaves as if she is a beloved child of God, deserving of the feast of love that is God's kingdom. Jesus delights in her and heals her child. I have a lot to learn from her. Maybe you do too. Our world is frightening. It would be easy for us to withdraw to our groups, to put up our defenses and stockpile what we need for our families, for our people, for whoever we think 
belongs to us. And those are the attitudes that got us here. Racism, patriarchy, all of those things. At its core, it's a belief that there's not enough in this world for everyone. And so we have to fight for just our own, our own race, our own gender, our own people. This is the sin of not enough, a sin that drives so much hate and competition and despair in our world. The Canaanite woman shows us this morning that in the kingdom we are called to live in. This is not the truth. She shows us that our identity as God's children means we can afford to expand our definition of who belongs to us. So this morning we are going to feast at God's table. Everyone who wants to. We come here with all our despair and our baggage from the broken world we live in. We come with deep assumptions about who we are and who belongs to us and with us. And we are invited to see in this table the feast of love that the Canaanite woman saw in Jesus. We are welcomed to eat our fill here. And then to go out into a world where we become the scandalous bearers of God's unconditional, abundant, and never-ending love. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed. Please stand as you are able. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. People are found, form three found on page ten in our worship bulletin. <clears throat> we join in prayer with the whole church, particularly our Anglican communion, <clears throat> and in our diocesan prayer cycle, we remember retired clergy, clergy widows, widowers, and clergy households of the diocese. We pray for your Holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. <clears throat> Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, including Michael, our presiding bishop, Melissa, our bishop, Alyssa, our celebrant, and all members in their 
baptismal ministry. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We, pray, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Your petitions are invited. Our, our countrymen from Maui. Let us give thanks for all the blessings in our lives. Our free country. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 <laughs> Great. Okay. Peace. Good to be with you. Peace. Peace. Right. I am told that now is the time for birthdays and anniversaries. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries being celebrated this week? Yes. Yes. What have you got? <laughs> Whose birthday is it? It's not birthday. Anniversaries. Oh. Yes. Right here. Go ahead. Yeah. 54 and 14. Oh, that is... Wonderful, that's amazing. So, um, tell me what you all do. Do you say a prayer, a blessing? All right. Uh, are you comfortable coming up here, or I can come down there if you want? Yes. Oh, all right. I can come down. Yes, we'll meet you down here. <laughs> There's nothing like being hauled up in front of everybody in the first time in church, huh? Yes. So, uh, no worries. Um, God be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Holy One, we ask your blessing on these two amazing marriages, the commitments that they have made. We are grateful uh, for health and faithfulness and love that you have generated and continue to generate through these two families, this one family. Um, 
And we ask that your blessing would continue, that you would give health, happiness, and long, long continued lives together. We pray these things, things in the name of your Son, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Bede and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. God bless you and keep you. God make God's face to shine upon you and give you hope. You are a child of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I'm going to let you take it because I've been touching bread. So. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 God bless you and keep you. God make God's face to shine upon you and give you courage. You are a child of God. Would you like a blessing? God bless you and keep you. God make God's face to shine upon you and give you joy. You are a child of God. I step on my outfit when I do that. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. God bless you and keep you. God make God's face to shine upon you and give you joy. You are a child of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Did you get some? No. Oh. Okay.
the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. You guys want some more bread? Our service continues with our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, the wisdom of God, and the love of God equip you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. 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 You may be seated for announcements. First off, thank you to Alyssa, the Reverend Canon Alyssa Newton, Give her the full title, Canon for Congregational Development and Leadership it's a, it's an extremely long Formation, day. Leadership <laughs> Formation, yes. So we're very blessed to have you. Thank you. Um, tidings deadline, articles deadline is Tuesday. So um, articles need to be my, need to be in by, to me by Tuesday. And at the back of the church, they, they were going to be handed out with bulletins, but I don't think they did. You'll see a, um, a flyer from um, the ERD about putting your faith into action, and it's about what we talked about last week about Maui, giving money to <coughs> ERD for Maui. So um, as we said last week, by all means do this. This is, this is good. <laughs> this is really, really good. But if you make it, checks out to St. Bede's and then we will send one check from the whole congregation. That way the, our congregation gets some sort of acknowledgement um, from it. But um, you can do it directly. There's nothing to stop you doing it directly, but a good way is to do it through St. Bede's. So make your check out to St. Bede's and on the memo line, ERD Maui. And then it'll, one check will go to them. And as you know, after the service today, we're going to be moving the pews out of the church. We're going to be, well, tomorrow, I guess, or the carpet. But today is the pews and everything in the, sacrist, in the sanctuary here will be moved. So if any of you feel so inclined, your muscles feel so in tune, um, Tom, who is our illustrious leader in this project, will, um, will guide you as to what he would like you to do. And please follow his direction, okay? So Claire, you had something you'd like to say? And you will take okay, This isn't a traditional announcement, but you've noticed the absence of Alan Browning. He's been in the hospital for a week and a half with complications from diabetes. So he asked for your prayers. He may be released tomorrow and luckily with all his toes. So, um, but keep him in your prayers for healing. And I saw him on Thursday and he, his spirits were very good and ve they were very confident and it's obviously it's happened. The doctors were very confident that they could plow enough 
um, antibiotic into his system to save his, his toe and foot uh, because there was, there was talk at one point of part of his foot being removed. But um, he, he, was, he was very positive and very good spirit, so, so that's good. Yeah. Well, as many of you know, tomorrow is family kitchen. Now, the guys are going to be busy helping Tom, uh, and I don't think we'll work you too hard. But anybody who would like to come is welcome. I'm going to be there early, early, because I'm going to roast the turkey that we can debone by noon. So uh, I'll be there early. But uh, normally, people come around at 11, and then we're usually done by 6.30 in the evening. So anybody's welcome. We have, we have a good time, even if we're working. So thank you. And maybe we should explain the family, for those that don't know, Family Kitchen is a feeding program for hungry, for anyone, and it happens at First Lutheran on Mitchell. Uh, I never know if it's road or street, but anyway, Mitchell. Um, for an hour, come for the day, we don't Yeah, so anyway, any, anyone else? Linda? Okay, this is Linda, the retired paramedic, talking to you. Midweek, Mary Ann sends out information about our upcoming service, and you have to keep reading down and down because there's more information there. And the one I want to talk to you about is e, um, CPR classes that are going to be held free by Central Kitsap Fire and Rescue. There's a little notice that tells you the dates, September, October, November, and December. If you think about CPR and you think about, gee, let's look around at all these people. Could any of us maybe use it sometime? Yeah, we've had that experience before already, so we know that. I really want to encourage you to sign yourselves up. It only takes an hour or so, and it could be the one thing you do that will change a life absolutely forever. So please go look at that and get a group together. It'd be cool to have a St. Bede's you know, cohort there. Thank you. Actually, along with that, South Kitsap are offering to come here to do a group here. So that's uh, not, to, not to, to separate it, but um, it, that may be a, a place, a good, time, a good chance for a lot of our people to come. So we're in, commu we're in communication with that, with them about that, so. Yeah, that's right. And these will be free. Yeah. All these people already made all the announcements. <laughs> but um, Wendy and her group are still working hard at their job know that they're doing a good job. And, uh, and again, I cannot overemphasize the necessity of volunteers to help us in the preparation of making our church really beautiful again. Thank you. No. So we will continue with our sending him, thou whose almighty word Mary will give us an introduction. Thank you. i 
just a reminder that there will be coffee and goodies over in the hall before we start work, so we have extra strength to, to move, right? <laughs> a short one, though, right, Tom? As Tom says, a short one. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth rejoicing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.